starts to leave me and I cannot talk or if my feet start to fail me and I can't even walk or if my eyes get so weak I can't see my way I'll never be too old to pray so as my age length my days grow few. I want to be used, dear Lord. Just like old Daniel, help me to see his example. There are things that you still want me for. Cause there's a world out there dying without your dear son. They need someone who pray them on through. And although my earthly frame may not be the same, I'll move mountains just by calling on you. So if my voice starts to leave me and I cannot talk, or if my feet start to fail me, and I can't even walk Or if my eyes get so weak I can't see my way I'll never get too old to pray Amen. If my eyes get so weak I can't see my way All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. You know, God's grace will keep you from getting bitter. It's the grace received, and it's the grace relieved. It's the grace given. And uh, just like that song says, God gives you grace no matter how old you are, uh, no matter how weary you get. Sometimes I don't feel like preaching, but I preach by faith, and, and the feelings follow. We don't serve by feelings. I mean, that's the caboose of the Christian life. We serve by faith. Amen. And God gives the increase whether you feel like it or not. And I appreciate your faithfulness so much. And uh, I'm looking forward to having all the Sunday school classes started back, choir started back, and I believe it will be in the near future. Matter of fact, some people are predicting as soon as the election, everything's just going to turn to gold. I don't believe that for a second, but um, we're going to go on anyway and try to do the best we can. And I appreciate you uh, trusting our church to do the best we can. Uh, it's not easy. Um, a lot of people have rolled their eyes at me when I'm giving announcements like we're not going to have an inside festival. I see your eyes rolling. I, I see them. I can spot an eye roll from a mile away. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, you know, and it's hard. It's hard to have the rules and regulations because independent Baptists are independent. They're going to do what they want to do. But uh, I appreciate your patience and I appreciate your confidence in us because we're trying to keep our church as, as, uh, as, as, clean and as healthy as possible, but only God can do that, amen? amen? And so, you know, who knows? But i tell you this, I know one thing, I've enjoyed this last six months, seeing souls saved and uh, families join, and uh, and I've been encouraged, I really have, and I've really needed it, and I'm glad I hadn't got bitter, and that's what I preached on this morning. If you did not hear the message, I pray that you will hear that before the week's out, because every Christian needs that. I don't know if you got anything out of the message, but I did, and I got a lot out of it, 
And I love Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to break the series and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And I'm going to preach on uh, my heart and my desire. The grace of God gives us a heart for the things of God. A desire for the things of God. But also the grace of God gives us ability that's beyond our ability. And that's the grace. So I'd like to uh, just uh, give you a few verses. I'm going to preach the whole chapter whole chapter 8 and 9, and I won't preach every verse, but um, you know, it's, it's giving by faith with grace as the base. We've we, we got faith in God and faith in His grace to be sufficient. So you're saved by grace, you're sustained by grace, and praise God, you're strengthened by grace, and you're, you serve God by grace. But I want to tell you something, it's the grace of God you even want to. When I got saved, God gave me a new want to. I want to be in church. How about you? I want to read my Bible. Sometimes it's hard and my mind wanders, especially when you get as old as um, Brother Alex's song was referring to. You know, you just, you, your mind wanders. Matter of fact, your mind turns off and it goes to another channel. And um, you forget things. You forget what chapter you was in. You have to reread the chapter because crazy things enter your mind but you need to still read your Bible, amen? I, I love that God's given me a new desire. And I want to tell you something, I thank God that that desire was put in me from my mama. I was a mama's boy, and my daddy was drunk a lot. But my mother got him up and me and Diane up every Sunday for Sunday school, church, Sunday night, and Wednesday. And I want to tell you something, I was taught right. That's like Lee Robinson used to preach in this pulpit, three to thrive. Folks, I want to tell you something, a little dab of do you won't do you any good. And some people, they don't give it a second thought to come back on Sunday night. They don't give it a one inch of a, uh, one second of a thought to come back on Wednesday night. They just think they paid their real religious duty at 11 o'clock. That's not enough. And by the way, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday is not enough. You need to have Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday. Don't leave Saturday out, amen, unless you're smoking wings. But, you know, thank God. Thank God for the desire. That's what grace is. And so I want to just preach a few minutes, and I want to give you about six verses in these two chapters that we'll take as our text where grace is mentioned. So let's stand on the Word of God. I'll give them to you as it come to me. And uh, first of all, I want you to see verse 1. It's going to be a very unusual way to preach, but, uh, uh, you know, I preach all kinds of messages. This is will be unusual, but I hope it'll be of God. It says, moreover, brethren, we do, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Folks, I want to tell you something. When the grace of God's bestowed upon a church, he is enough. Say amen. amen. His grace is sufficient, not only in trials, but in the service of the Lord. And then I want you to skip on down to... Um, uh, see this real quick. Uh, let's just go ahead and read. How that in great trials of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded into the riches of their liberality. <clears throat> Excuse me. For their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power. I like that part of the Christian life, don't you? It's supernatural. And they were willing of themselves. There's the grace. You're willing. Do you have a will to do something for God? Do you want to be here tonight? I think you do. I hope you're not here to date or relate, but to worship. Amen? <clears throat> or pay you a little religious duty. Look at verse 4. Praying us with much entreaty that we receive the gift of taking upon, uh, upon us the fellowship of the ministry of the saints. Now listen to this. <clears throat> By this they did, not as we hope, listen now, but first gave their own selves to the Lord unto us by the will of God, and here's the next mention of grace, insomuch that we desire Titus, that he had begun, so we would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as you abound in everything, Brother Kevin preached on this Tuesday, I believe, Wednesday, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. 
want to preach on this grace tonight. Look at this now. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became what? Poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. Now to save time, because the kids can't listen over an hour, and some of y'all can't listen over 30 minutes, uh, and I can't either, but I want you to skip down to verse 19. It says this, And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us, with this grace, he's referring to a love offering. It says, which is ministered by us to the glory of the same Lord and decoration of your ready mind. I like verse 18 where it says the brother. Everybody wants the acknowledgments. They always want to be written up in the bulletin. And folks, the Bible says the brother. It didn't mention his name. Now let's skip on down. Chapter 9, verse 8. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, and, the God, and, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. One, one last verse. Verse 14, chapter 9, 2 Corinthians. It says, and by their prayers for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. That is not a Christmas verse. It's okay to apply it as a Christmas verse, but this is a verse ending two chapters on giving. I want to preach on the grace of giving. You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you, dear God for this church that gives and gives and gives. And Lord, they don't give grudgingly, but they give willingly, and they give sacrificially. And God, our church has been so blessed to have no debt but the debt to Calvary. And God, so blessed to have churches all around the world that are depending upon our grace and our prayers and our testimony, and our faith to encourage them. And so, Lord, bless tonight as we preach on this grace, this desire, this heart to live and to give our lives as living sacrifices. And we'll praise you and thank you for stirring our hearts, not for some faith promise commitment, but, God, that we might give more of our lives to be committed. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there's many kinds of churches. Uh, some churches are gravity churches. They're pulled by the world. They give fearfully. I don't give, uh, if I don't give, God will punish me. That's fearfully giving. Some people have tearfully giving. It breaks my heart to give away my hard-earned money. They almost weep when the offering plates pass. Then there's nearfully giving. I don't mind giving to help locally and especially to the building program, but I'm not giving outside the church. Uh, there's peerfully giving. I sure hope my peers find out how much I give. And then there's yearfully giving, and that's where you increase your giving so you'll have an increase in tax deduction. I'll tell you how to solve that. Just have a lot of children. You'll have your tax deductions. Amen. <laughs> You'll need every one of them. But anyway, thank the Lord that we're not a church that's gravity given. But folks, we're grace given. Amen. We're given by the grace of God, our lives. And I want you to see, first of all, the motivation of, of grace giving. Number one, it's not eliminated by our poverty. I want to tell you something, friend. I don't know about you, but I see sacrifice in verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now that is a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded of the riches of their liberality. That's a, that's a, that is a, a strange comparison. Deep poverty, but riches of liberality. 
See, folks, it's not much, it's, it's not dependent upon your resources. It's dependent upon God's resources. Let me say this real quick, or I'll say it real slow. <clears throat> God will give more through you than he'll give to you. Can I repeat that? God will give more through you than he'll give to you. We're not called to be reservoirs of blessing. We're not called to be aquarium keepers. We're called to be fishers of men. We're called to be supernatural disciples. We're called to be sacrificial. And folks, I want to tell you something. A lot of people, they take the two words serve and sacrifice out of their vocabulary, and they come to church to be entertained. They come to church to uh, get something out of the church. They come to uh, try to maneuver and manipulate and get a blessing. But folks, you ought to come to bless his holy name and sign up. Sign up for availability. I was so uh, thankful that recently I gave a, a new member survey that we give out to all the new members in our new member packet. And uh, the, the fellow that I gave it to was just so intent. To, he said, I'm studying over this. And I want to get involved. And whatever you need, uh, I'm available. I about died of a heart attack, praise God. I said, thank the Lord. You know, folks, we don't need more bench warmers. We need bench fuel fillers. Amen. And the way I'm eating, I'm filling the pew more than I was yesterday, amen? Sometime or other I got to go on that diet. It'll probably be in heaven, but I'll go on that diet. But I want you to know, friend, we need with all our heart to eliminate the excuse that I can't do it and I don't have it. God is able, amen? God is able. And our faith should be in God, not ourselves. Amen? God is able. And then number two, we should not be coerced by pressure. Look at verse three. It says, for their power, I bear record you, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Folks, uh, we need to be willing workers. That's what our ladies meeting used to be called, willing workers. And um, thank God for willing ladies. I don't know what our church would do without the ladies of this church. Uh, matter of fact, sometimes they outwork the men. We got some good men too, praise God. We had a wonderful time Tuesday, and we're excited about the next month's men's breakfast. But folks, it's not just to eat. It's not just to enjoy. It's to sign up and enlist in the prayer, uh, be a prayer warrior, and to, and to find out what God wants you to do through His church. Folks, we're fellow laborers. We're fellow soldiers. We're not just fellow shipping. I love fellowshipping. I've missed fellowshipping more than I've ever missed in my life. I'm a, I'm a very uh, uh, cordial, friendly person, believe it or not. But this uh, mass thing and, and this distance thing has got me just unfriendly. I mean, I'm just, I don't have to speak to nobody. Praise God. I just, I just, I'll just sit there and look at you, and you won't even know if I'm frowning or smiling. No, that's not what it ought to be. We ought to, we ought to at least wave at people. Give them a fist bump, elbow bump, or something. Amen. Or at least throw a paper airplane at them with a note. I appreciate you. God bless you. Encourage you in the Lord. Folks, we should not be pressured by the flesh to give. Look at verse 4. Praying us with much entreaty that you would receive the gift taken upon us, the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. The fellowship of the ministering of the saints. You know what I'm thrilled about? I have a part in over 100 church planning ministries in the world. Amen. What a blessing. Uh, you're a fellow, fellow soldier uh, to all those down in South Africa and, and, uh, and all the prisons of, the, of America and around the world through Brother Gregory. Uh, we just took on a young, uh, I mean a young family going to Nigeria. I don't know why I keep emphasizing that. Their parents are going to listen to me preach and change their mind. But you ain't taking her. But folks, thank God we can have a part in that. And it's the fellowship of labor. It's, a, it's grace that's abounding. Look at verse 6. Verse uh, 6, please. Or 5. It says, And this they did not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. <clears throat> folks, we should not be correct. Uh, 
coerced by pressure from a man to give or from others to give or be guilt giving or even sympathetic giving. I can tell sad stories all day long and so can you and get your tears flowing and man, you'll drop another dollar in the plate. That's not scriptural giving. Folks, scriptural giving is spiritual giving. If it's not scriptural, it's not spiritual. And folks, I want to tell you what is so precious when it's spiritual giving, God's grace gives you a desire. It's my heart. It's my desire that the whole world worship God. It ought to be our, all our heart's desire. And so Paul um, said it's no it's grace giving or faith promise giving is not eliminated by poverty. Don't tr- check your bank account and decide what you're going to give to mission. Check God's bank account and you'll find out he ain't broke. And he can give through you a lot more than he can give to you. It's a blessing, a channel. Don't be coerced by pressure. And don't excuse yourself by performance. Look at verse 7. It says, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and all diligence, good church, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. Paul was saying, you're doing well. You got a lot of faith, you got a lot of speech, you got a lot of knowledge, you got a lot of diligence, and you even got a lot of love. But wait a minute, don't forget this grace also. The grace of giving. That's exactly what this means. This grace also is the grace of giving. Grace is both the desire and the ability to do God's will. That's another definition of grace. It's the desire and the ability to do God's will. You cannot serve God except by faith and by grace. You cannot be a giver because you will be a taker and a getter and be selfish to the core if you're not dominated by the will and the, and the grace of God. God will help you die to self. That's the grace of God. God will help you look at others more than yourself. That's the grace of God. Say amen right there. How many of you know that? A lot of times we spend too much time in the mirror admiring ourselves. Amen? One, one, one teenage boy was looking at the mirror and said, you know, I, 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 I'm God's gift to women. Y'all used to think that, amen? Some of you men. He went to his pastor and confessed the sin. He said, I've got a terrible, I've got a terrible, terrible sin of pride. Every time I look in the mirror, I think I'm God's gift to women. And the pastor looked at him and says, no, that ain't a gift of pride. I mean, that's not a sin of pride. That's a sin of a wild imagination. Amen. And I'll tell you what, folks, we have some wild imaginations about ourselves. Amen. Folks, we're nothing without God. We can do nothing without God. But we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us in the will of God. Say amen. Stop making excuses or stop thinking, well, I'm performing pretty good. I'm doing real good. I don't need to give. No, you need to give. You need to let God's grace give through you and abound. And then grace is not enforced by power. If you go on down to verse 8, it says, I speak not by commandment nor occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. He said, listen, I'm not telling you have to give. I never have told anybody to give. I'll never forget one time, though, I forgot my tithe. And I remember uh, Connie was sitting over here about right, right up closer a little bit. Uh, she liked me more then. She was up here closer backing me up. And I looked at her and, and uh, from the chair, I think I was sitting on this side for some reason, and I said, put the tithe in. Mouthed it a little bit, not that loud. And three visitors got offended and walked out the door. <laughs> no, not really. But I'll tell you something, folks. I've never told anybody to tithe. I've never made anybody tithe. I've never coerced anybody to tithe. Uh, folks, I'll preach on tithing because it's the Lord's, amen? You ought to not rob God. And he, he deserves the first fruit, second fruit, and all the fruits, amen. Right. But folks, I want to tell you something, folks. Paul was not a dictator. He says, not by commandment. But I love this. He says, it's proving the sincerity of your love. Now, I want to say this. If you love somebody, you give to it. If you love something, you give to it. You know, there's some people that's going to fly all day today to go to Arlington, Texas and watch the seventh game of the National League Championship. 
they will pay a lot of money for that ticket. And then they'll pay a whole lot mo more money for the ticket of the, in the stadium because they're only seat 18,000, I think. And they're going to do all that, and then their team might lose. I hope not. But their team might lose. You know I'm a Atlanta Braves fan. Their team might lose. I don't think they will. But their team might lose. You know, right to the brink of success and then bomb out again. Like the Falcons. But anyway, listen, I'm preaching against the Falcons now. But listen, I'm going to tell you this real quick. These Cub fans, they know about frustration. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to tell you this. They love that team. And they love baseball. And they love everything about it. And they're willing to invest their treasures and their time and their talents all for a ball team. Now, folks, how much more, how much more should we prove the sincerity of our love for Jesus Christ who died for us? None of those Jaybirds or Braves or even Dodgers have died for you. And they wouldn't die for you. They might not even pick you up on the side of the road. But I'll tell you what, Jesus Christ died for you. And I am a fan. And the word fan, we get the word fanatic. And the word fan means ardent follower. So just call me a fanatic. Not for the Braves. I'm close to that. But not for the Braves, but for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God. Thank the Lord. We spend our time, we spend our talents on what we love. Where our treasure is, is our heart. Matthew 6, verse 21. Oh, folks, grace is not enforced by dictators and commandment, but it's by love. Then I want you to see the greatest illustration and the greatest motivation for grace giving. It's found in verse 9. When we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, emphasize that please with me. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Aren't you glad you know Him? Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus found you when you wasn't looking for Him? Amen. When you was in the depths of sin? I mean, when you was wrecking your family, wrecking your health, wrecking your mind. I mean, I'm talking about sad how much you lit, loved yourself and did anything for the next high or the next low, or the next escape, and it's always about me, myself, and I. And thank God the Lord Jesus Christ intercepted your life, rescued your life, redeemed you off the auction block of sin, and saved your unworthy soul. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. Amen. Oh, what a Savior. And folks, if you had to be coerced or begged or bribed or primed to serve God, what's pr what the problem is, you need a heart adjustment. You need to be filled with God's Holy Spirit and thus filled with love. Amen. First for the Savior, then for the sinner. Say amen. And if you're in love with the Savior, you'll be doing everything you can to get one more sinner to His, to his cross. Amen. Look at it. For well, we know the grace of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. That through, though He was rich, yes, He's the creator of everything. Yet for your sakes, yet for your sakes, He became poor. That He, through His poverty, that ye, so personal verse, what a personal verse, that ye, through His poverty, might be what? Now, folks, God has blessed you, but He didn't bless you for you to bask in that blessing. God blessed you to be a blessing. Amen. Genesis 12, 2 says, I bless thee to be a blessing. You're a steward of every blessing. You're a steward of every day. You're a steward of every cent that God gives you. And by the way, when we talk about money, all money is is time minted. If you have a $800 in your pocket, and you bring that home, that's 40 hours of your time you gave to some employer. 
And you made that money, and folks, that's time minted. So when you give an offer and you're giving your time back to God, you're saying, Lord, I would have not had sense to get out of bed if it wasn't for you. I would have energy to hold down the job. I wouldn't have the desire to even work. I'd just be a bum and get on entitlements and live on the government welfare. God help you. You ought to work if you can. Say amen. Come on now. I'm preaching now. Somebody ought to back me up on that one. This entitled world is why we got such a mess politically we, we have up there. Everybody wants a freebie. Just go to work. Just work for a living. Praise in, check in, check out. Be the best employee that the, the place has. You'll be a whole lot more content and you'll sleep a whole lot better. Say amen. Say about the message I preach this morning on bitterness. It sure is a waste of time to lose sleep being bitter or worrying. That's a that's the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. And I didn't I didn't start that till this last year. I've lost some sleep over the ministry. I gotta confess it as a sin. I sleep like a baby, praise God. But I think it's really the sinuses, too much smoking on Saturday. Amen. And I'll tell you this, friend, I don't think it's worth losing sleep over. I think we'll have the peace of God when we go to bed. And folks, we'll have the love of God. We ought to serve the Lord. And I think we ought to get tired serving God. Amen. We get tired doing everything else. I know some people get tired of playing. The other day I was at a ball game, the Hall's ball game, and uh, Peyton, I think, coerced me into playing football. He, said, he, he looked at me and said, you're too old to play football. I know that. I said, I'll show that little whippersnapper. Praise God, I was diving and jumping up and you, catching football. I was really showing off. Didn't walk for three days, amen. <laughs> Couldn't even hardly walk. I proved that little guy wasn't over the hill. But I proved to myself, boy, I'm going down the hill, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and if I keep this up, I'm going to be under a hill out there in Shady Acres. Thank God, friend, we need to get... We need to get what we, God's given us, energy, strength, vitality, enthusiasm. Use it for God. Because it's your reasonable service. That's right. Come on now. I just want to, I just want to close this out. I, I'll get to the verses later that I want to get to. But I want to tell you something, friend. We need to realize that by the grace of God, we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was so rich that he became so poor that through his poverty we might be rich. That's the motivation for giving. He first gave. I like John 3.16, don't you? But I'll tell you what, friend, there's another John 3.16. Turn to 1 John 3.16. And I believe this ought to be the results of experience in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I can quote one more verse, Brother Alex. Ain't gone yet. But I want you to look at 1 John 3, 16. The Bible says this, Hereby perceive we the love of God. Know about it. Meditate on it. Experience it. Because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Folks, I want to tell you something. One of the greatest source of encouragement to our missionaries is that you're faithful. And I don't know how many missionaries could testify to this, but there's a lot of supporting pastors that's bit the dust. And there's a lot of supporting churches that have split over some color of the, of the children's wings or to, to wear a mask or not wear a mask. Socially distant or not socially distant. Folks, the missionaries are on the field sacrificing, facing Muslims, danger. And they're encouraged when they see the sincerity of your love proven by the sincerity of your giving. So friend, give your time, give your prayers, give your money. But folks, give some faithfulness that the missionaries when they come back home like Jeremy's coming home 
in a couple of weeks. Wouldn't it be sad if he came home a couple of weeks and this church was divided over these little things compared to eternity? The preacher had already got discouraged and he resigned. The deacon split over something and he comes back to a church as cold as an iceberg, dead as a doornail, and the power of God has went out the back door and Ichabod's written on it. The glory of God has departed. And I wouldn't want to go back to the field either. But folks, we must realize that we should be a grace-giving church. We need to be a church that's inspired by God's love. And folks, we give not for a tax write-off, not for appearance, and not for reputation. We give because of Calvary. Amen. We give because He first gave to us. And so, folks, what is the solution to it? i got about seven minutes. I'm going to try to dismiss you early. There's, the grace giving is, is marked by performance. You look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11. The Bible says, now therefore perform the doing of it. And I think Nike's got that theme, now just do it, or something like that. I don't even know what Nike means, but it's some kind of, Greek goddess, I think, or something. I don't know. But folks, listen, you need to you need to just do it. Now then just do it. Heard a great message in years past by Dr. Jack Howells. Now then just do it. Now then do it. Just a phrase. He was famous about preaching phrases. But now therefore perform the doing of it. That as there was readiness to will, so there may be the performance also out of that which you have. Let me just say this, friend. Grace will put you past talk and get you to walk. And I have a favorite saying, are you just talking the talk or are you walking the walk? And James 2, chapter 17 says, it's dead faith if you're not walking towards a sinner, walking towards somebody that's down and out, walking to somebody that's hungry, and walking to somebody that family's falling apart and they need counseling, walking not in your little circumference of your comfort zone, but going out by faith and doing it. And then we measure it by providence. Verse 12, it says, But if there be first a willing mind, it is acceptable according to that what a man hath, and not according to that that he hath not. And for I mean not that other men, verse 13, be eased and ye burdened. Thank God, folks. Listen, the Bible says in Luke 12, 48, much is given, much is required. For God blesses us with ability to earn a living, Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. An unused sponge will become hard and stagnant. Need some water. Need some water to give to the countertop. Needs water to give to the back of your head or wherever that sponge is applying. And folks, I want to tell you something. Some people just stagnant. They don't. They, you know why they're stagnant? They don't have an outlet. Folks, by the grace of God, you want an outlet, you have an outlet, and you overflow with God's love. Isn't that a wonderful description of grace giving? Love is not love until it's given away. Amen. Love is not love until it's given away. You can say I love you all day long. I can say I love my old dog that I inherited. Now, now he's, he's about to go back home. They're going to take him back and give him to another neighbor. I've got to tax the old thing. I told him bye this morning with tears. Not really. <laughs> I thought about it. But I'm going to miss the old thing. Because he loves me. He knows who feeds him. He also obeys me. He's got a couple of habits that I'd like to shoot him. He digs holes all over the yard. I know how to break him. I've almost got him breaking. Now I'm losing him. Now pray for me. I'll get over it. But folks, listen. Love is shown. Even a dog knows their love. Say amen. A dog knows. Hey, at five, at five o'clock, he, he barks one time saying, Master, I think it's my supper time. And here I go, stopping everything I do. Picking up the IMs, going out there, 
It's good dog food. It's biblical. And I'm sitting there and, and put it in a plate. And he looks up at me with those big brown eyes and says, thank you for your love. Man, that's a good relationship, praise God. <laughs> and don't make fun of me because I'm going to tell you something. Brother Petty loves his dog more than he loves a lot of things. <laughs> we'll get him in trouble. We'll break them up right now. But listen, <laughs> folks, thank God. Thank God that we know God loves us. Amen. And thus the only natural, reasonable service is that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, and be a living sacrifice. Die to self. Have your Calvary. Have the resurrection. Praise God. Live the spiritual life of giving. Don't live for yourself. You're smothering yourself, and you're smothering everybody else with your selfishness. Amen. Nobody wants to be around a selfish person. If there's a person who's got the gift of giving, it just seems like there's a crowd around him. Say amen. And anybody that ought to be a gift, have the gift of giving is one that's been saved, saved, saved. Then we go on down to verse 16. It says, but thanks be to God which put the same earnest care in the heart of Titus for you. Folks, we see it's measured by providence, but it's measured by prudence. It takes work. Titus was a man of compassion. Titus was a man of consecration. Look at verse 19. And not that only, but who was chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, that benevolent offering, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and decoration of your ready mind. He was a man of character, verse 21, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. That's why we have monthly statements around here. That's why we have yearly statements. That's why we try to show you where every sin is spent. We're not ashamed of anything. And we have a treasure that looks at every check that's spent in this church. It's called a transaction report, Quicken. It's about to crash because the computer's about as old as I am. We're trying to get that updated. We want to keep good records. We want to be honest. We want to be open. We have nothing to hide. Then I see that he was very competent. Verse 21, And we have sent with them our brother whom we have oft times proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Folks, he was a messenger. He was a provider. He was an encourager. He was a pastor, if you would. And folks, I want to tell you something. God sends leaders to encourage you to live by faith. God sends men and ladies in your life to prod you and not just prod you and push you, but to motivate you by example and by character, by competence, by consecration. And folks, we need to set the example. And what, what example are we setting? That God's grace is sufficient. What kind of message would we send to our missionaries if we cut them all off? If we cut them in half? Because we're having a rough time in the United States of America. They're having a rough time in Africa. They're having a rough time in South America. They're having a rough time in Japan. And they're having a rough time in China. How would you like to be a missionary to China? They, they hate Americans over there. Their life is in jeopardy. They're still excited about going. Praise the Lord. But I want you to see in closing, I'll just read these verses and we'll go, but I see the manifestation of grace giving. In chapter 9 it says, For it's touching the ministering to the saints, it's superfluous for me to write to you. He says, Your works speak for themselves. Look at verse 2. For I, I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of, to them of Macedonia and Acadia, it was ready a year ago, and your zeal has provoked very many. Your zeal has provoked very many. Folks, I don't know about I don't know if you know this or not. I'm just bragging on you. I'm bragging on God. I'm not bragging on me. But we got a reputation as a church of sending out missionaries and having a missionary heart and helping missionaries. And I want to tell you something, it's hardly a day goes by that some missionary doesn't call me begging to get in this place to share their burden with you. And that's an honor. 
And folks, we should never lose that generous spirit. It's only by the grace of God. Look at verse 2. I'll just close. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you. And folks, I want to tell you something. Our missionaries are provoked to love because of your love. Look at verse 3. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest happily if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared, we that we say not ye, should we be ashamed in this same confident boasting? Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye have noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not of covetousness. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And here is the cycle of grace that I love so much. It says, and God is able. We can stop right there and shout if we were shouters. We shouldn't, we shouldn't definitely be powders. God is able. I believe that, don't you? And he says this, to make all, here it is, here's that word we're studying, grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Now, folks, there's the cycle of grace. We see, number one, the measure of grace, all grace in that verse. Then we see the, uh, the uh, not only the measure, but we see the manner of grace. It says, and God is able to make all grace. God's able to make all grace. And here's the motion of grace abound towards you. He's blessed you. He's just blessed you. If you're saved, you're blessed. But look at this. I see not only the measure and the manner, all grace and the manner abound and the motion towards you, but I see the means. It says that ye always having all sufficiency. God's sufficient and His grace is sufficient. And folks, I see it, the means, all sufficiency. But the last phrase is what I want you to notice. It says, in all things may abound to every good work. Don't stay the grace of God. Don't stop the flow. Don't damn the channel. Block it. Blocked arteries is a problem. Say amen, all you cholesterol watchers. I need to do that someday. But I want to tell you something, friend. Thank God. When you have a ministry, God gives you more grace. Hey, when you have a flow, God fills. And He never fills for you to have a feeling charismatic. He fills you to overflow. You shall be witnesses. Thanksgiving. Joy. All sufficiency. And so let's read this verse together and we'll close. I want you to read it with me now. Verse 8. You with me, class? Here it is. Let's read it. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God help us to realize that God is able. We sow Sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. We sow bountifully, we'll reap bountifully. You know, anyone can count the seeds in an apple. It's usually about two or three, isn't it? Four. Ask these farmers back there, they'll tell you. Anyone can count the seeds in an apple. But only God can count the apples in a seed. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. Only God knows the thousands and thousands and thousands of souls 
and hundreds and hundreds of churches that will be established, that will blossom, and that will reach souls because you sowed bountifully by faith and let the grace of God flow through your lives. You know, if you had your fist tight, I mean clenched tight, is my closing illustration, don't pack up, clench your fist. You say, I ain't going to do this silly thing. Well, don't do it then. I don't care. But if you, if you take your right fist, all of you the right-handed, and clench your fist real quick. Come on. Help me out, Jack. Praise God. Okay, good. And uh, you got that fist and you hold it tight. Come on now. Come on, hold it tight. Clench it. Come on. Keep it clenched. Tighten it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it a little more. Hold it a little more. Now let it go. Which one felt better? <laughs> Amen. And I want to tell you something. We shouldn't be a tight-fisted church. We shouldn't be just in this thing for what we can build and what we can experience and how we can get a new air condition. We ought to be a vessel abounding, and superabounding with the grace of God and all sufficiency in all things to every good work. Father, use this message. Thank you, dear God, for the privilege to preach tonight. I felt the liberty of God on it. And Lord, I thank you for the, the energy to get up here, the voice to proclaim it. But God, I thank you I got a word to preach. I don't have to tell these stories and have silly illustrations. But God, I got your word on it. And Lord, I got your grace. Lord, I got you as my Savior, and I praise you and thank you for saving a wretch like me. Lord, I don't know where I'd be today if it wasn't for the grace of God. And Lord, I don't know what I'd be doing, but I'm certain I wouldn't be preaching to a wonderful church and pastoring a wonderful people if it, except for the grace of God. God, by your grace, you saved me. By your grace, you've called me. By your grace, you have sustained me for these 47 years of ministry. I don't know where all the years have gone. Seems like just a few years. God, I sure have enjoyed the privilege of loving your people, shepherding your people, being called pastor. No regrets. And I pray no retreats. And drawing upon the grace of God to do your supernatural, eternal work. Seeing souls saved. All for your exaltation. All for your glory. God, use us all. We're just nobody's telling everybody about somebody that can save anybody. God, help us to be available. God, help us. God, help us. Not to quit in times like these. Not to divide the church with our arrogancy and our opinions. But God, to be faithful. To draw upon the grace of God not just for our salvation and not even to get over bitterness as I preached this morning. God, that we might have the grace of giving is our prayer tonight. With every head bowed, every eye closed, here's a simple invitation. We're out of here. How many need the grace of God to fill you to overflowing? To be the daddy, the mama, the husband, the wife, the child, the minister, the servant, the laborer, the soldier that God's called you to be. Would you slip your hand towards heaven as a prayer request and close all over this place. Father, use this message. I believe it's the message you laid on my heart and I thank you for it. And I stand amazed that I could even get it together. I stand amazed that I have the privilege to preach your 
infallible, powerful, inspired, eternal word. I just stand amazed. Your wonderful grace that strengthens us when we want to quit. We want to sit on the sidelines and we want to feel sorry for ourselves. Thank you, dear God, for equipping us for the furtherance of the gospel and to glorify your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.